Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. I'd like to welcome the next mayor of Houston, Robin Williams, to the show. How you doing, Miss Williams? I'm doing well, sir. If you are able to turn up your volume okay. so I can hear you, we can get this thing started. All right, we'll do it. What about now? What about now? Is it still low? Yes, you're coming in low as if I'm muffled. Is it? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me wait. What about now? Perfect. It's perfect? Yes. All right, we rolling now. All right, we rolling. So the reason why I wanted to interview you is because I've talked with them. A lot of what they call old heads, right, or, or the uh, elderly generation, right, from male to females, right? Yes, sir. And they would tell me how their neighborhoods used to be once upon a time. And you can see the, the despair and desperation on their face because they don't understand how to maneuver through this new way of life as far as how the community has played out, meaning it once close knit community, crime wasn't where it is today, uh neighbors was looking out for neighbors, uh you know, things just in in their eyes has gotten out of hand, right? Yes. And so what I was telling them was, you know, when it gets to this point you know, you have to have someone who has their ear to the street and who's out there fighting every day. And what more or who can be that person other than someone who one has served as yourself, a Marine, and also a cop because you're right there in the midst of things. Absolutely. And not only that, Having that background in humanitarian work where, you know, being a manager of the American Red Cross, reconnecting refugees to space by war and all of that, helping the community in a major way, going out into the community and, and, and providing resources. Correct. Now, you know, it was an incident that concerned me not too long ago where you were out on patrol and someone uh, 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 made an attempt on your life. Yes. Um, I make no secret I, that crime is at an all-time high in Houston, Texas. The crime rate in Houston has been compared to the crime in Chicago. Um, records state that it has surpassed Chicago. So I, I can never forget this on December 31st, um, 2022, right? A day before the new year. I was um, dispatched to a call and I remember the call coming in and I, something that, so I, it didn't sit right with me. The homeowner stated that he heard a noise in the back, in his backyard. Mm -hmm. He was armed with an AR-15. So he saw, you have the right to bear arms. Um, I'm all for protection of life and property. Mm -hmm. And so they said, you know, we'll wait for law enforcement to get here. So he goes on to say, well, I've now obtained a handgun. I have an AR-15 and a handgun. Mm. And so he said, well, I'm afraid. Granted, okay, if you hear noise, you may, you may possibly be afraid. But he could not elaborate on what kind of noise he heard. Was it voiceless? Was it wildlife? Did you hear someone walking across? Did you hear vegetation being crumbled under someone's feet? And he said, um, I just don't feel safe. I want to give the police officers in route the PIN number to my home. If you have an electronic door, it's a PIN number. You can get in and enter it. And so I'm en route to the home. I'm hearing the transaction take place. And they're saying, no, we, we can't do that. And he said, well, I want them to come in. I'm going to be inside of my study. And I'm going to be armed. 
again, this past told them we cannot do that. So come out, let allow law enforcement to check your property, and they will be there. So now my partner and I, we're getting this, you know, eerie feeling that something could be wrong. This is an individual stating that he heard a noise and he's fearful. He doesn't know what type of noise, but he's arming himself with multiple weapons. So we take all weapons out just to be cautious and we take cover between the vehicles. If anyone who's ever served or know anything about vehicles, you know that the engine block can stop a bullet. You know that the A pillar, the first pillar of the car, the B pillar, which is behind the passenger, behind the correction, behind the driver's side. And then you have the C pillar that's behind the passenger side. Those are like metal pillars that have the ability to prevent bullets, some bullets from making contact. Mm. So I take cover behind a B pillar. And I remember talking to my partner and I said, this doesn't feel right. Doesn't seem right. It's extremely dark. The house is heavily wooded. It's not really lit. And the, if you have ever watched the movie, the purge, the alarm that they're playing, the mm, 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 is playing. Right. Outside of the home. Uh-huh. And so, or if you've ever deployed, you may hear or watch or ever watch the military movie, you know, that sometimes they play the um, alarm to ring, like to notify danger is in the area. So we, I'm hearing this and it's dark and he doesn't want to come out and he's armed with an AR-15. And so we know that our armor, some of our armor um, does not protect against AR-15 rounds, assault rifle rounds, unless you have the plates on. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly saying, come out, come out. He's refusing to come out. Dispatch is talking to him. I hear a very loud sound. And I'm thinking it's additional officers because it sounds like a patrol car coming. I said, wow, those officers are getting to us fast. And I look over my shoulder and I see what appears to be a white pickup truck that's moving extremely fast. And I look at my partner. And at that moment, I say, I believe it's an ambush. We're we're in an ambush. I believe that this car was a ruse and that it was going to um, come in contact with me. So we're looking. And my partner was like, I believe it's an ambush. And he said, Robin, move. And when he said, Robin, move, I just felt like as if something was coming very close to me and it makes you want to move fast. And I slightly peek behind my shoulder again. I see this white pickup truck curving into my patrol car trying to strike me, going approximately 90 miles per hour. I right in between the patrol cars and I die and I take cover. Hmm. Now it's moment I'm thinking this was a ruse. He distracted us to uh, make us lose our position and the homeowner is going to come out and open fire on us. Mm. So I have my weapon in my hand. I know I'm hurt. Um, I can feel it. My hand is um, busted open. I feel a pain in my elbow, my knee. I I feel my shoulder dislocate. And I'm still t- I'm still taking cover because uh, we still have to be in a fight no matter what. And I guess that's the Marine in me. Right. And the car goes, it zoomed by, I get up, we take back cover. I say, I tell my partner, call it in, call it in. He said, hey, a white car um, going extremely fast just blew past us. And uh, also, thank God our officer was close. They followed behind it. And they were able to catch up to the vehicle. And when they caught up to the vehicle, it was a young um, young adult, 18, maybe 19, born 2004. And um, they take off in a foot pursuit. And the subject has a handgun on them, a loaded handgun. They're able to get the handgun, detain them, 
and arrest them for UUMV, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, and for layman's term, theft of a motor vehicle, and um, UCW, unlawful carry of a weapon, and assault on, aggravated assault on a peace officer because he deliberately tried to run me over and kill me. And in that moment, we have that scene, but we still have to clear the other scene. Mm -hmm. Uh, Two other officers finally make our location. We finally tell him, come out, come out. He comes out. And the first thing to notice is that he has his hands up, but his wife is wearing a bulletproof vest. What? A bulletproof vest. And then his daughter is there. He has a daughter, maybe five years of age. And so I search him immediately. I search the wife. I go under her vest and I ask, why do you have a vest on? Say, because my wife's pregnant. But that's not sufficient. If you heard a noise in the background and you're armed with all of this, uh, all of these weapons, why does your wife have on a bulletproof vest? He goes on to say, well, I'm Air Force intelligent and I'm in the, and I was in the army. And right then and there, he doesn't know I'm a veteran, but my radar goes off. And it lets me know that this guy is possibly lying right. about being in the military. He doesn't said he was active. He doesn't have a military haircut. He doesn't carry himself in the military tactical way. He never announced it to dispatch that he was in the military. Usually veterans and military personnel, as well as first responders, announce their job title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the two other the other officer has him. We search him. Unfortunately, I have to search a five year old because we don't know what what a kid has been training. We do know that a child can cause harm. Right. We just re- we just realized that on the news, a six year old shot his um, teacher. Teacher, right? So as we go into the residence, and I'm the first one to enter. I look to my left, I see a pile of old uniforms, almost like Vietnam era, very old. They, they were not current. Then I look down, I see three long um, guns, three rifles, ammunition. I look to the right, and we're clearing it. I see two other assault rifles and a pistol. No correction. I see um, two assault rifles. I don't see the pistol. Inside of the... Um, Study, it looks like furniture is disheveled everywhere as if he was going to take cover. If we entered that residence, it was as if it was going to be, for a lack of better words, open season, which is slang for the subject was going to see us and maybe open fire. So we clear the residence and we allow him to go back in and EMS is called out. My shoulder is dislocated. We're, it's a thousand things going on right now on our shift. We just get another call where someone is, uh, a homeowner is a victim of a home invasion and they're fighting and the offender has a weapon. Here I am, my shoulder is dislocated. I'm taking my bulletproof vest off. I'm taking my vest off and EMS pops my shoulder back in. They're like, oh my God, you are you're tough I, and we hear this audible click and I put my bulletproof vest back on and I put my uniform on and I drive my patrol car with one arm <clears> back <throat> to the police department and then another officer takes me to St. Luke's where they do um, x-rays and they tell me you have deformities in your shoulder I'm guessing from the impact of me falling on the ground because I had a weapon, I had to control my weapon. We we all know is every bullet it has a reaction. Right. It's called it. So I knew I couldn't just fall any type of way. I had to brace myself to where my finger would remain, would remain intact and away from the trigger. Mm. Mm. So um, my knee is swollen, my hand is busted open. Is bleeding, they're racking it, they're taking the old bandages off EMS, put on my hand, and I I don't have time to process what is going on because I hear my radio going off and it's crying like never before. 
And it, 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 it's so much crime, we have to call for a sister of the agency. That's when another police department has to come in and assist us with the crime. Because it's a, we're outnumbered next to criminals. Mm. And and see, the fact that you're you're out there risking your life to protect the citizens of Houston, we got to give you all the respect and, and, and love in the world because it takes a certain type, a certain type of, of care for peace to do this job. And today's criminals or today's crime or today's atmosphere is not your grandfather's atmosphere of criminals and crime. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, I see some of the, the candidates that's, that's running for uh, the mayoral position. And if it, it takes a particular type of person in today's time, we're doing this by the time that we're living in today. And you have the experience of hands-on dealing with what's out there as if you are a barrier between those who, as we call, um, law-abiding citizens. Absolutely. And you can't, you can't watch a movie and get this you know you you can't you you can't imagine or even just talking with someone and understand what's actually going out there it takes a person that's in the midst of it all to know how to guide and direct us through this dark time what is this this period of time because crime is the number one thing that's on uh, the agenda for for the citizens in Houston. They want to combat the crime. But you can't combat the crime if you don't have the insight to it. Absolutely. Um, I tell people all the time, with this race, you have to be careful with certain media outlets because it's been de divisive and it's not true. There's no truth in it um, because they're going to, they're trying to make it a popularity contest and who raised the most amount of money versus which candidate has the best qualifications to become the next mayor of Houston, Texas? Which candidate has truly served the people? We're talking about um, one of my opponents. They state that he was a, a, a stand-in temporarily for the district clerk, and he sits on the board. That's not that that small <laughs> amount of time. Being a district clerk does not make you or solidify you to be the next mayor of Houston, Texas. That does not give you the experience of working with the people, right. fighting and combating crime. That doesn't give you the leadership ability. I've served in the Marines. There's no greater leader, in my opinion, than a Marine. We all know the Marines' story. We'll always be, we'll always be outgunned, outnumbered outnumbered but we will put up a fight and when you hear the name marines it shakes fear in the enemy's heart because they know we are coming so houston when you hear robin williams i want you to know that a uh, marine is coming and i mean business when it comes down to my residence i mean business when it comes down to the continuous amount of crime that's progressing i mean business when it comes to Reconnecting, reconnecting police police officers with citizens. We got to talk about that. The lack of trust between each other. I mean, business. We're talking about a candidate that served as a council member for a short amount of time, gave up her seat to run for Senate and came in dead last. And they're saying, hey, this is experience, uh, political experience. No, mm -hmm. absolutely. Not. That no. that's not enough experience because given the opportunity, if she became the mayor, which she's not, would she abandon Houston the way she abandoned Houston when she was a city council member? So we have to talk about that. We have a 
senator that's running for mayor with 20 plus years of experience, why now those 20 plus years of, of experience did not prevent Houston from going through this crime wave? Right. Well, when I say, and when I think about experience, I see that you have actual hands-on experience. That means that you know what need or what we need in order to get the job done because you're there. And absolutely. And, and so that means that, look, our, you know, the citizens' lives are at risk. How many parents are tired and you turn on your news and you see a child in their bed sleep and, and get hit with a book? And, you know, I even talked to you about uh, mental health issues. That's a part of it, but you are abreast with how to get them help and the direction and places that they can go to get that help, which is you rarely hear that. That would that that is what makes you so special is is the information and the care on how to solve the problem. See, the problem with Houston was it was just passed on to the next mayor, then passed on, and then somebody like yourself said, "Wait a minute, you know we got to fix this. We're not gonna pass this down the road again because lives are at risk, uh, purses getting snatched on the railway." Kids getting shot in bed. Okay, I mean, that's beyond uh, a human level of understanding. And and, the, and at one point, the people who cared felt like they've been beat down so much till they don't know what to do and they are looking for an answer. And I believe you are that answer that they were looking for. Absolutely. Um, it goes to my campaign policy, a change of direction. I am that change that Houston is seeking. I am that mental health training officer. I've been hands-on with victims of human trafficking, victims of domestic violence, victims of homicide. I've been hands-on with family members, and we've had to hug it out when their family members committed suicide. This is real. There's no other candidate with this amount of experience. Experience, and I refuse to allow it to become a popularity contest or a contest on who raised the most money. No, let it be a contest on merit. Let there be a contest on how much you've given to the community and the change you've made in the debt that you have paid to society. Yeah. That is what we need to focus on. I don't want to hear about a popularity contest. Right. My Oh, is to make sure that people have food on their tables mm. because if you're bragging about how much we're raised, the average American has not seen that amount of money. Right. Average American, the minimum wage in Houston is still seven dollars and twenty five cents. Mm. And here we are bragging about how much we're raised in a campaign. Right. That should be the last thing we're talking about. Exactly. We, we we are living in a different time. How is your rapport with the, the, the shop owners and business owners, you know, in, in, in the jurisdiction uh, where you serve? It's phenomenal. You know, a lot of them know me by my first name. <laughs> some, have seen that. some have seen my my campaign and know my name is Robin. You know, some, some call me the mayor cop. Some call me Officer Williams, but bottom line, they know that I'm going to always put com the community first, and we're here to serve. Customer service goes a long way in policing. I know a lot of people are like, well, you do customer service. Anytime I interact with someone, my job is to give them the highest performance of service with the knowledge of the law. Right. Absolutely. Right. And so, love me. I love if you, look, if you look it up, I'm all over Missouri City website, Facebook. Um, I love what I do. I have a passion for it, but am I getting worried for my fellow officers? Absolutely. You turn it on the news, there's police officers dying, criminals dying, innocent people dying, babies dying, 
it's, you, it, it's no secret. I hate that we're trying to hide that crime is so bad and shut officers up from telling their truth. Right. But Houston, we are in danger. The red alarms are, are, are going off. We yeah. need a mayor that is truly going to prevent crime. We need a mayor that's truly going to get out there and talk to the community. We need a need to need relationship with community activist leaders. Um, we need to have this open discussion and and really listen. We are just guests and we are just guests in the community that we serve. When you're a guest, you're supposed to be on your best behavior. I need to listen to what's the problem, I've seen it, illegal dumping, a lack of street lights. When you don't have street lights, street lights, anything bad will fester in the dark and grow. That's criminal. That's BMVs, burglar of a motor vehicle, home invasion. That's, that is a breeding ground for criminals. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, it, it's sad. it saddens me when I hear politicians talk more about statistics but they they so out of touch with the people. They they don't even drive in certain areas in certain neighborhoods. They the talking heads. They get these statistics, and they feel like that they have the the, the mouth or the gift to gab to fool the citizens of Houston. And me personally, I'm like, look, we're not going going to do this this election cycle going in 2023 because I see what's happening. You know, when you have so much crime and and you have stores that shut down because they're afraid to get robbed, that take resources and money out of the community. And that creates food deserts. And now the, 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 the citizens have to travel a long amount of distances to get groceries. And some don't have vehicles and they own public travel. There's so much going on right now that if we don't uh, change this thing, and and, 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 and and change the direction we're headed, it'll be almost like parts of Houston will seem like uh, we're living in a third world country. Absolutely. You take Sunnyside. Sunnyside is one of the oldest communities in Houston, Texas, but one of the most forgotten communities. Sunnyside was founded by a black man after the Civil War, and, you know, it was once a thriving community, it was compared to um, Black Wall Street and once considered Baby River Oaks. And the many railroad tracks in a landfill got dumped into Sunnyside, and Sunnyside has the highest rate of um, sex offenders that's registered in that area. It became uh, often re referred to as the dump of Houston because everything negative is dumped into Sunnyside. And it was a, a thriving community that I believe can go back to the once thriving community that it once was. But it can't if you continue to turn a blind eye and police activity is not engaged with the community. It's not police deterrence, neighborhood watches, uh, are not put in effect and we are not allowing the people to be a voice. Unfortunately, we're living in times where people fear police officers. They fear talking out against them. They fear doing the wrong move. So they'll rather endure being in crime. And when crime is prevalent, like you said, food deserts, not only that, not too long ago, um, the mayor was holding a, a corner store are responsible for a certain amount of crime in the area because it was an influx of crime at that store. The home, the store owner has nothing to do with that. That's a lack of police activity. We can start to close them down. Again, that go another store that's out of the community, creating more food deserts, and people have no way to get to the store. We, our elderly community, unfortunately, lived in some of those um crime stricken neighborhoods. Right. And elderly can't get back and forth to stores, they're gonna starve. It, it's real. I've seen elderly personnel eat um dog food and cat food because it's the cheapest thing they can afford or yeah. it's the only thing at a dollar store uh that's edible that they believe to be edible. Yeah. When you can't protect the elderly and you can't protect the young Everything collapses. Everything falls. 
you know that that that's been the story. You can go back to Rome. You can go back to Greece. Um, you know that you have to protect your elderly and the youth. And you know one thing uh, by you being a Marine, you can go into a situation, assist a situation, get a strategic plan together to bring about the outcome or the desired outcome. And, you know, I, I just want the the, 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 the the citizens, the people that are listening to this, to, to wrap it around their minds. This is not um, play. This is for real. This is for your future and the future of your children and the future of your bank account, you know. So make, make, make sure you pay attention. Or the future of your school district. Uh, we know Houston ISD is constantly co closing schools. This is serious. We are in a state of emergency. Don't let the glitz and glamour fool you. We are in a state of emergency. And we need a leader. And I am that leader that is willing, that is willing to bring a change of direction to Houston, Texas. The songwriter Sam Cook said, you know, I go to my brother but he winds up knocking me. I don't mm. want to be the storyline for Houston, but I do want the line he states that a change is going to come, and it is. I want that to be our headline, not, hey, if I go to someone, I don't get help. No, I don't want that. Well, I, well look, well, I, I thank you, and I thank you for seeking to be that change. And I thank you for putting your life on the line to make sure that that change comes through. As I stated earlier, it's it's easy to just get on the mic and say words, but you have the actual scars and you have the actual uh, events and time put in to see it through. It, this is not a about... Um, good speeches and whatnot. Although I can't say you you do deliver a great speech, but you also have the action to go along with that. And that's what we need. Thank you for being on the show, Volpick Radio. Uh, there will be more to come. I know you got a lot of things on the agenda uh, coming soon. Martin Luther King Day Parade. Uh, I mean, you, you're in the community. Uh, people remember the name Robin Williams for mayor. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed this. It was like a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much. All right. Real quick radio. We out.